So, just a double confirm, everyone can hear me, right? Yes, perfect, at the back. Yes? You, you, all, you all want another PPAP or...? <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, um, very good morning. And thank you very much to Yelin, uh, the organizer team, um, to invite me to be here. I'm very excited to be here, actually. Um, we were, uh, I was traveling with my girlfriend in the, two, in the past two days around Yangon. Um, we, we like the place, very, very pure, and uh, there's a lot of opportunity, I can tell you. Uh, we see a lot of opportunity. So, why, why I'm here today? So, it's more, uh, it's more like for me to share some experience um, as a designer. Um, so, first question, I, I know there's a good mix of students and professionals, but is there anyone here that you know you're interested or you you kind of envision yourself as a designer or you really love things all things design? Is there anyone like design? Okay, there's a, there's there's quite a few. Yes, no problem. But let me explain to you or, or share my experience to you so that maybe it will inspire you to go into design a little bit because you have to know that. Creating a solution to a problem doesn't only involve engineering, it also involves a lot of designing, understanding the problem, and design a solution around it. So it's very important to also uh, look at design um, quite often. Um, so let me just start with the, this quote. Oh, I will turn on. <coughs> Technology failed. Okay, so. Here's a quote that you can read, you can just indulge yourself for 15 seconds. You kept me alive through colon cancer. I truly love you. Such a powerful message. Okay? It's, it's a very, very powerful message. And this is what motivated um, me and the team, the fabulous team, um, to continue work on the product. I will explain why it's fabulous actually, just a little bit. But this quote is a user, uh, is, is some, something that sent from our user. So this motivated us a lot. And actually yesterday we just received, uh, received another message from a 80 years old, 80, 80 years old users telling us that they enjoy using a web. So that's fantastic. So let me Introduce, just briefly introduce myself. Okay, my name is Taylor Ling. Okay, you can reach me at uh, at Taylor Ling. So I'm coming from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So it's about two and a half hours away. Um, we arrived two days back, so it's all good. Maybe a little bit jet lag, but it's all good. So let me just give me just like you know, ten minutes or five minutes to explain what is fabulous. You might. You might want to know why it's fabulous and why I'm here actually. So, fabulous is actually a habit forming companion um, using scientific approach. Okay, we, 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 we don't use things that we think it's right. We, we use something that is, has been proven by science, um, what's working and what's not, uh, and also self coaching. Okay, we don't just create an app to keep reminding you doing this and that but we actually motivate you to coach yourself so that you form good habits in your life, okay? So for example, just a very simple one, like when you wake up, you drink water, okay? So it's such a simple thing, but there's a lot of people that's not doing that. Um, when you sleep for eight hours, when you wake up, your body actually needs water because it's been a long time that your body has no water going around. So you really need to drink water, so that's that's actually basically the first habit that we try to introduce to the users to, to, to self-coach, to self-develop the habits into their life. So it's aimed to create a healthy life routine, okay? So, and then it will stick to your life forever, okay? So this is fabulous. So working with researchers, we 
found the three pillars or the three elements that helps um, people stick good habits in their life. Okay, first of course motivation. You must have great motivation. Um, you know, uh, rewarding motivation to tell the users or, or to, to actually let anybody to do something. You must have motivation, right? So motivate you, but it's not just motivation. You have to have a reminder. You have to have someone to remind or nudge you to do that quite often, okay? For example, you want to pay bill, you need to have some reminder to, to remind you to pay bill. So it's the same concept here. You want to do something, you can you, you you probably will forget it. So you will need reminders. So reminders and of course stickiness. We work very hard to also make this habit stick into your life, doing it over and over again, making it as a habit. So you will keep continuing doing it. For example, if you are able to run for straight seven days, two weeks, three weeks. And after that, you will feel awkward that you are not running. So you will keep doing it. And that is a good, healthy habit. So stickiness is very important. So these three elements is very important in, in the Fabulous app. So just something that for me to, to, to tell, to, 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 um, to say the state of the Fabulous app. Um, currently, we are, of course, the uh, editor's choice. Um, we are also featured uh, in Google Play stores. Um, we are nominated in Google Play Award for best design. Um, we, we are not getting it. We are just nominated. But just a few weeks back, um, we are very happy that we actually get the Material Design Award um, for Charming Engagement category. So this is what makes us believe that we are heading the right directions. And I'm happy to share some of the things that I learned during the journey as a designer uh, when designing fabrics. So just some stats. Um, currently, we have 2.4 million total downloads, um, 400,000 daily active users, and also 8,000 plus daily new users. So these things is going to grow, of course. Um, but come to think of it, this is actually achieved by a team of five people um, with zero funding. We actually fund ourselves. So this proved that you can do things without funding, okay? You, you don't have to like, I, have, I need to have a lot of funding, I need to have a lot of money. You get support from Google, okay? Sunson is here. If you need any help, just go, go towards him. He will help you to achieve anything that you want to achieve. So here's some interesting bits that I would like to share, okay? Just a few experience that I, um, that I actually go through when I'm designing fabrics. Um, it will be a little bit serious topic. Uh, not, not too serious, actually, but just to share. But if you have, I, I'm not sure if there is a Q&A session. If you have any question at all, just ask. If you have no opportunity, you can ask me on Twitter or uh, Google+, Plus. no problem. I will share the slides. Uh, I, I think Yelin will going to share the slides. So talk about minimum viable product. How many of you know about MVP? Minimum viable product? No? Okay. Good. It's such a good thing that I, have to, I can explain to, to, to you all what's minimum viable product. So, so put it as simple. It's just a product with the minimum features um, to validate your market. Okay. So for example, just now as uh, Dr. Tun uh, mentioned that you found a real life problem, okay? You want to solve this problem, but you can't, you can't possibly spend one or two years developing that just to validate whether it works for the market, okay? Unless you have a huge, uh, huge, huge bag of cash. But otherwise, for startups, it's going to be one, one month to six months maximum to come up with an MVP to validate the market so that you know that, oh, your, 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 your product is going to work for these users, uh, solving the real problem, and then you continue to develop it. So by definition, MVP is product with enough features um, that can be used for market validations for further development. 
So what's the keyword here? Okay, the keyword here is enough features. Okay, okay, you must have enough features so that your users is able to use these features to solve their problem. Validations, of course. You are going to use this to validate the market. Definitely, you are not going to create a product that no one is going to use, or you are not pushing to your potential users. And of course, remember this further development. You are not creating just a simple one that you are not considering to further develop it. You want it to be success. You want to create something that is good and ready for further development. But a lot of time, this definition is not enough. Okay, it's it's good. You have enough features. You can validate it. You can uh, you you can make it ready for further development. It's good. But a lot of people missing this part, which is functional, reliable, usable, contains emotional design, okay, which can deliver customer value. This few small words but very strong meaning behind actually because if you design an MVP from the bottom because you think oh I will just have enough features so let's just make it functional with bad design or I mean with uh, with uh, very I mean simple design is fine but if it's a design that actually making the whole flows or the experience bad it's not going to work that way the user is not going to experience in the best way that can they can possibly uh, to experience so a lot of startups I can tell you there's a lot of startups especially in Southeast Asia there's a tendency to try to build the MVP from the bottom, which is just functional, without um, concerning about reliability, usability, emotional design. So what you have to do is when you create an MVP, okay, focus on these areas. You touch on each of these um, to ensure your product is functional, usable, reliable, and have emotional design. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that you must have a lot of design in it, but it's more like you understand what is the uh, problems that the user is facing, what makes the uh, user flow more smooth, um, you know, uh, do the heavy work for the users. You know, you're not trying to keep prompting the users this, 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 but the user will expect one button to do everything most of the time. So try to leave the hard, uh, heavy work for the users. So that's come to the emotional design and also usable. Reliability, very important. If your app keeps crashing, um, it's not working, it's not going to work. The user is not going to be happy about it and you can't validate it in a very efficient way. So building MVP is this way, not just functional. And just one another example how building an MVP from the start to the end um, start from Functional, reliable, um, uh, usable. So this is an app. I'm not sure if there's probably someone is uh, a lot of people is using iPhone probably. So this is the camera app in iOS 2, the very old version of iOS 2. Very simple. It's just a viewfinder with the camera button with the photo viewer. And as you can see, when it goes to iOS 10. Okay, it has more functions, more reliable, more um, usable functions, you know, a lot of more features going, going around, a little bit of design tweaks, this and that. So this one is a very, very good example of how you should build an MVP. Okay, you do not start with an MVP with bad, really bad experience, um, bad UI. You start with something simple, you can validate, and then the users can, 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 can tell you whether the experience is good or bad or whether you are going to the right directions. So you look at here, you can know what I mean. So if you want someone to use the, the product, you first view a, a skateboard and then a scooter, bicycle, motorcycle and car, something like this. You do not build from a car, let you build a window and then you build one uh, tires and then you build an engine, it's not going to work. It's not going to work that way. So that's minimum viable product. And in Fabulous, we apply this very thoroughly. 
um, this is the current interface that in our in our app, which um, which thanks to Google uh, we managed to back a design award. So what is this? This is actually the very very first design that we kind of come up with when we have the idea um, we wanted to solve the user's problem, and the interface is like this. I mean, it's it's not too bad. I mean, I designed this, so probably it's not too bad. Uh, but actually, it's very bad. <laughs> so we decided not to go for this because we understand that we wanted something that is really great to use. I mean, we do not want to have feature pack. Okay, we don't want to put in all the features that we can thought of, think of, but we want to start with a simple one that we can validate. The user can use it, send us feedback, and how uh, and tell us how how we can improve to solve their problem. So. We move away from this one, we go spend a little few months to, to refine the design, to come up with this design. So this design is actually the very first version of our app released in two and a half years ago. Um, so we released this, and this was bes uh, before the material design coming in. So we released this, and we get, got a lot of good feedback from users. Users love it, um, telling us, how it can help them, and then we get a lot of ideas from the users. So this, is, this shows that how important that your MVP can be. If your MVP is good enough, you are able to validate the, the idea, and then you know, oh, this is the right direction that we should go. So this one, and then after that, material design comes in. Okay? Then we thought of, well, it's a good opportunity for us to redesign the app. So we basically spent about nine months, actually, from the very early draft designing and then implemented nine months. And we released this version. And this has been the uh, user interface in our current app. Uh, you can check it out. It's in some Play Store. It's called Fabulous if you are interested. Um, try it out. You, you can just leave any comment if you have. But this, again, shows how important is our MVP ready for further development. Okay, we don't use brand new codes. We just change the UI. The code behind is still pretty much the same, optimized a little bit here and there. But the mechanism is the same. So that's um, MVP. Second point is a lot of time you might think, or people that do not understand about design, they think design is art. Okay, it's like Picasso, Van Gogh, you draw art. And that's design. Well, I mean, in, in some way, that, that's true. But a lot of time, when you're designing stuff, um, especially when you're designing solution, you are not doing art, in a way, of course. Um, there's, still, there's still some design disciplines that involve a little bit of art. But for example, designing apps, um, a lot of time, we're not talking about art. We are more talking about using the data, you know, Analyze the problem, solve the problem, design the solutions. Okay, so why I'm saying design is not art, of course, because there's a lot of things around designing product. Okay, first, of course, you have problem, so you must analyze the problem, you design a solution, and of course, unless you are a charity house, you are going to design a product that you want to sell, okay? You have a business go around it. You want to earn money, okay? You want to be the next billionaire, of course. But you must align your your your, your product um, with a business goal. But your business goal is not the only target that you want to go for. You are actually wanted to solve users' problem, okay? And there you can reach to your next goal, which is you know the business goal. A lot of money is coming in. So design is not just about visual. Okay? Like maybe just now when I'm mentioning about the design of the app from the early draft to the first version to the material design version, you might think, oh, it's just visual. No, it's not, it's not just visual. It's just part of it. There's a lot of mechanism behind it that you have to think about. Is this going to be delightful? Is this going to be creating frustration? Is this straightforward enough? 
that's a lot of things that you have to think in designing a product, especially uh, applications. So, you know, uh, as a designer, I think engineer is the same to sometimes you think that what you thought is right and you're going to do that. But in design especially, a lot of time things tell you otherwise. Okay? Like for example, I might have a preference on certain design directions or a certain opinion on, on something. But when you have analyses, you have researchers, uh, you have statistics, it's telling you a different story. I will show you an example how how this is um, ap applied to Fabulous. And of course, how to know if the solution works, okay? There's no one will know. I mean, you can have long discussion, long day discussion um, in your meeting room, saying that, hey, this solution is going to work for all the users, blah, blah, blah. But the only way to validate is ship it, release it, get it to the user's hand, get feedback, and then you will know whether it works, okay? Of course, not everything going to be this model, but if you're talking about building apps, for example, or website, this is probably the best way to release it, get the user in, get the feedback, and then you can optimize from it. Create your MVP. So, this is one example in Fabulous. Um, this is why design is not an art and statistic will tell you the story. So this is basically a mock that um, I created. Um, when you start a new journey, this will show and then you know there's a play button to, to make you kickstart your journey. So we were actually tracking using you know, Google Analytics and then we found that you know, there's only 70% of the users is tapping on this play button. 30% will just skip the app and probably uninstall the app for some reason. So we were wondering whether just a button will affect the click rate or the tap rate. So we went ahead and do an experiment. Okay? We changed the element from this one, a transparent button, to a solid button with a glowing effect, okay? giving you the hint that, hey, you can tap here. And surprisingly, of course, so 70% of the users, we found that there's a 22% up in the tap rate. So 92% of the users, when they reach here, they will tap the play button. And that's, of course, a very happy ending for us. But of course, we're still confused. Where is this 8% of the people? So we, we are still trying to figure out. But I mean, 22% is a very good growth rate, or very good hacking. Um, in terms of design and also product uh, development. So let the statistics tell you the story. Design with data when, whenever it's possible. So how many of you have created apps yeah, and put it in Play Store? Yes? Cool. Fantastic. And of course, when I say one star, how many of you rated one star in your Play Store or your App Stores? Like you download an app and then you feel unhappy with the app and then you say one star. This app sucks. No one? Oh, everyone is so kind. There's no one rated one star, two Just Sorry? Just uninstall. Just uninstall. Yeah. Don't care. <laughs> so it's going to waste your time to tap one star, right? Yeah. That's a good point. Ah, that's a very good point. <laughs> But of course, uh, in Fabulous, we, I mean, there's a lot of people rate, rate us. Um, uh, fortunately, we have a lot of four or five stars. Uh, but there's a, a, also a lot of one star as well. So, hello, one star. So, when you see one star, what do you think our reaction? I mean, especially my reaction. Because I design an app, you know. I love people to say, hey, the app is good, the app is good design. But when I see one star, I will see, <laughs> why? Why do you give me one star? So it's very normal that you know you feel frustrated, you feel sad, you feel, come on man, you do not know the effort that I put into design, and yeah, we can give you one star. But to think about it, you know, in Play Stores, that's a very valuable feedback. 
it's very normal to see this reading with a sad face, but you know, why people actually, just like this gentleman was mentioning, if you are hating the app and you don't like that, you just uninstall, right? There's a lot of you probably doing that. I'm doing that as well. I mean, it's not going to work my time to tap one star. I hate this app. <laughs> it wasted my five minutes. But let's say if there's users really doing that, why they're doing that? Probably they really hate the app, maybe. But probably they want to tell you something, okay? So we look it at a different way. And this is actually should be the way, if you are app, app makers, this is probably the way that you should look at it. These users are using this as a platform to tell you what's wrong, okay? Like for example, I can tell you in our case, 50% of this user, one star, or probably two star as well, is telling us about the language, okay? Our app has a lot of content in it, and it's initially started with English, Okay, so we we actually push it internationally, so every uh, most of the countries will be able to download. Um, but a lot of countries, a lot of people actually wanted the app to be available in their in their language. And so, fifty percent of one star telling us, "Oh, it's not available in our language." I give you one star, and then you will be surprised. If you look at one star, you will see some comments like this. I love this app. Fantastic, one star. <laughs> so, we were like, okay, thanks for the comment, but how about more than one star, you know? So, use this, pla uh, so one star, it doesn't mean always bad thing. We always use the opportunity to communicate with the users to say, hey, maybe you kind of mispress. Five star is here, one star is here, so <laughs> please change to five star if you're happy about it. I can tell you 90% of the people will change it, okay? Because they think it's, wor uh, it's worth the time to, to give the compliment. So one star is not always bad thing, but do use one star as an opportunity to recognize the issues that you have. You know, we recently have a quite serious crash um, that we didn't aware of. So these people are really using one star. One star, the app crashed. I'm gonna die. Please see, fix this problem as soon as possible. Blah, blah, blah. And we only see five or six, and we already start panicking. So, oh, oh my god, there's a lot of one star coming in. But yeah, we managed to solve it quite quickly, and these people are happy again. They changed from one star to five star. So, Again, one star is not a bad thing. Use this as an opportunity to, 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 to see what's, problem, what's the problem. Of, probably the user is just um, mispressed. And of course, you have to appreciate this user because like, this gentleman is not going to use the time to press the one star. Okay? Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So, we talk about uh, all these things. And of course, you probably get a message that when you're creating an app or website or digital product in general, you want to create a beautiful product, right? You create a beautiful product, it's going to work. I'm going to be a millionaire because this is beautiful. No. Beautiful app is never enough, okay? Why? Let me tell you why. So, let's just use some, you know, theory kind of things to make it easy to visualize. Uh, we use BJA form model on human behavior. We talk about what's the three most important things to keep the user engaged with your applications or, or engaged with your product in general. <laughs> you need motivations, okay? What's your value proposition? Why I have to use your app? Why I have to use a product? How many of you are using iPhone? iPhone? How many of you are using Android phone? How many of you are using Samsung phone? Quite a lot, okay. So, if I ask you why you are using the phone, you 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 always come up with, um, you you always agree with the value proposition that your manufacturer is telling you. You know, for Samsung, for example, maybe it's slightly cheaper than iPhone, maybe it's faster than iPhone. But iPhone users, oh, camera is better. You know, the uh, the, the the OS update is faster. 
there's a lot of value proposition and there's always a reason why you choose that direction. So motivation is very important to engage with the um, product. Ability, of course, this is more like applying to um, digital product. We talk about user interface. I mean, we believe in the near future, 10, 20 years, user interface probably is not going to be um, um, related anymore. It's not going to be relevant anymore. There's no more user interface in the future because you're going to use your thinking, you're going to use, you know, VR, for example. You, you don't have, you don't need user interface anymore. But now, yes, you are going to need a lot of user interface. So, ability to let the users engage using your app or using your digital product is very important. And triggers, okay? Without triggers, without prompts, your user might forget about your product. This is why you see Samsung, I think I see a lot of Samsung advertisement outside. You know, there's always this kind of prompt triggering, triggers telling you, hey, our phone is good, this and that, you know. So this tree is the uh, main pillar in human behavior, how people actually engage with your product. So applying to a curve, I mean, don't, don't, don't worry, okay? There's no calculations or whatever. It's just a way to visualize if you have a strong value propositions, you have prompts at the right time, you have intuitive interface, you're going to have a lot of engagement. Okay, if you have weak value proposition, people do not know why they want to use a product, and that's it. They are not going to use the product forever because they don't care. They do not know why they have to use your app. Or you have a very strong value proposition. It says, hey, use our app. You can, you know, you can create um, beautiful photograph, you know, or uh, things like that. But if you have a very confusing interface, like when you tap here, the things doesn't happen, you know, things is crashing, stuff like that, it's not going to work as well. I mean, engagement is going to be low because your interface is not going to work. But if you have both things ready, but you have no prompt, you have no trigger to just a slight subtle nudge, okay, telling the users, hey, this is something that you can do, this is what you can do, empower the empowerment, telling the users what this app or this product can empower them, it's very, very important. This is why, okay, there's, there's not so much iPhone user, but I believe many of you has viewed the iPhone or the, basically the, the advertisement by Apple. If you're not, go and have a look. They always, always communicate their value proposition very strongly in their advertisement. Okay, I, I mean, most of the advertisement is probably doing that, but the one, the one in Apple is really, really strong, telling you what you can possibly, possibly uh, achieve with your product. So with the, with the, uh, with the successful prom, with the good interface and strong value proposition, you're going to have strong user engagement. So just a few takes away from that graph or this human behavior graph, always remember intuitive and fantastic UI is alone. It's never enough, okay? Designing a good app is just a start. It's just a beginning, okay? You have to think about what's next, how do you prompt the value propositions to your users, um, think about when your prompt should be. I mean, you, you do not want to keep prompting your users every single minute. Hey, use our app. Hey, use our app. Oh, it's five minutes. You haven't used our app. Please use our app. It's not going to work that way. So think at the very suitable time. Um, I mean, of course, you can't just predict um, at the right time. But of course, with machine learning you know, and stuff like that, it's always able to be better predict uh, what's Come, uh, what's prompt, uh, when, when to prompt the user. And so, put it into fabulous context, of course, uh, for Melvin Motivation, we have our onboard specially crafted for the users to motivate them, to tell them what our app can do, okay? And then, 
already start putting them into the, the, uh, the, the perspective and what they can achieve using our app. And also we also occasionally send letters to give you information, to motivate you, to tell you the success story of other people. Then of course we created the user interface to give you the ability to do what you want to do which is forming a good habit and of course often we use good prompts, trigger, we come up with dialogues communicating with the users, telling hey you know it's time for you to you know, drink water um, oh you're not doing this well, is there any reason whether something that we can help you you want to do it in a way that it feels very natural feel it in a way that it's very human we often got feedback from the, app, the user saying that hey we love your app, it doesn't feel like an app it feels like a friend which is exactly something that we are trying to create in the application itself so these three things is always important to think about motivation, ability and trigger in, in, in the user engagement uh, for products attention to details so this one is a little bit more on the designer side but I can tell you attention to details is very important why? I mean I will show you why later but often when you talk about attention to details you know when you talk about design people say um, oh you're just obsessed about pixel perfect you know um, beautiful illustration you know stuff like that but it's not just that I mean when you talk about attention to details there's a lot of in it especially in digital product you know you have a lot of copy okay usability users flow all are equally important and each of them plays a very important role in ensuring your users use the app in a very good experience but of course as a designer I can understand that you know if we were given time we will spend all the time we can to perfect a design you know if you're giving me one year to design just a small thing I can use that one year no problem but it's not it should not be the case of course you cannot too obsess about it you must have something that is at uh, acceptable high quality push it to the market and then optimize it slowly just like iOS and iPhone you know Android on Android phone it doesn't come out with a powerful version first and then just stop there it come out with a very usable good version and then it keep improving over and over uh, time so that should be the model that um, we should do in design as well and often probably why the user uh, a lot of time people say well why 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 concern about the details you know no one's going to feel about it no one's going to notice it I can tell you it's wrong I mean in fabulous we really really um, trying to prove this message is wrong because you can see in play stores this is uh, one of our benchmarks uh, on the rating on the comment you can see design actually place in the very first place what does it mean is that there's a lot of users um, I mean they track it at like 646 but it's actually a lot more than that so these people talk about design in their comment and most of them are positive comment because you can see the effect on rating it's on the green side what does it mean this means that most of I mean I mean just a perspective our current uh, rating is 4.67 4 out of 5 stars so design comment, the comment about design plays a very very important role in getting this rating because it has a very positive rating in it um, num numbers versus peers that this is to compare our compet competitors and we have 9 times more comments about design to our app 
So this, this just means that the users appreciate the design, appreciate the details that we put in, appreciate all the pieces that we put in for them. So users notice it. A lot of time, of course, the user are not going to tell you, but they appreciate it, and people who have time, they will tell you. Thanks for the good design, we really enjoy using the app. And that's motivated us a lot. So, what the, the takeaway here is, if you're able to, when you're designing the app, when you're implementing the app, when you're engineering, uh, engineering the app, when you're doing the product design, always look at the details as well, okay? So, it, because it's very important in your long-term uh, running of the business or the product. Talk to your user. I mean, seriously. If you're creating a product and you say, no, I don't have time to talk to my user. I'm very busy. I am very busy. I don't have time to talk to the users. Stop. Stop right there. Don't do anything until you talk to your users. The thing is that a lot of people for start forgetting when they are creating something, they forget that they are creating the product to the user, for the user. And they are the one who is using it. You are not the user. Okay? I mean, we use Fabulous as well. I mean, me and my co-founders, our team use Fabulous as well. But we are not going to represent the whole group of the users. So this is why talking to users is very, very important. And you must find time for it. And you must find a way to do it. You'll be surprised there's a lot of big corporations, um, successful ones. They, they do not have this as well. I mean, they, they fail to talk to the users. They start, you know, maybe they start talking to the users, but they like to ask these questions. What do you like for the next features? They expect the user to tell them what they want. But a, a lot of time, this is not the way. I mean, you are the one who actually figure out what's best for the users, what's the user's problem using the app, is there any way that we can improve the experience, stuff like that. Users are not going to tell you what they want, okay? They, just, they will just tell you what they need, um, what's the problem they're facing by them, and then you figure out the solution for, for them. And of course, a lot of time, when we able to have the time to talk to them, we actually have a lot of teleconferencing with our real users. Um, even though we work remotely, I work in Malaysia, my co-founder is in Paris, you know. But we have a lot of teleconferencing with the real users, talking to them, um, getting information from them, what's made them happy, what's made them frustrated. Um, and then we figure out what can be improved. And that's very important, we think because this is the way how we can improve the user experience with real data, without imaginary problem. So talk to your user. Speak the language, okay? So this is right, right? This is hello, I think? How do you pronounce this? Oh, I cannot hear, it's two, it's <laughs> just one person. Maybe you? Minglawa. Is it correct, Minglawa? So when I say Minglawa, you understand what I'm talking about and then I understand what it means. So speak the language is very important. When we create Fabulous, we started with English. Okay? We thought that English is a universal language, it should work in most of the country without worrying too much on the language. But of course, as I mentioned just now, we got a lot of one stars telling us, hey, it's not available in our language, please do this language, one star. And then we was like, no, uh, yes, we can do it in your language, but can you rate based on the content, based on the app design, you know? But they just don't care. They said, no, give me this language or I will give you one star forever. <laughs> okay, fine, we will do the language for you. So, we, we, feel, that, we feel the needs of the language. Of course, I mean, if the app 
is in your language, you feel more familiar, you feel more welcome, you feel more natural when you're using it, of course. So we started translating um, the app to a few international language like uh, Spanish, French, uh, Chinese, for example. Uh, we have some early success, of course, but we have another problem then. First, I mean, users tell us they love the translated language, they love the translated content, of course, that's perfect. But then, after some time, they tell us that, hey, you know, we love the language translation, but we also want our culture to be adapted to each language. So that poses a very huge challenge for us, because for our app, we have a lot of content, we have a lot of words in it, we have a lot of suggestions um, to form habits. So adapting um, the language with different culture is a huge challenge and something that we do, do, do not foresee, actually. So until now, we are still figuring out. Um, we are still talking to people from different countries. For example, if we are going to translate to Japan, Japanese, we're going to have a Japan people to look over it to adapt to the culture, you know, to the food that they available. Because I mean, it's kind of strange that you ask you ask a, 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 a Japanese to to go and buy sausages. You know, they they love sashimi, they love sushi, stuff like that. So it probably have the very same um, nutrition value. But the availability is not that uh, easy in, in, in their country. For example, I'm not saying that it is the case, but I'm just giving a rough example. So adapting to a culture is very important. So this is one takeaway for you is that if your app, I mean, if your app is a simple one, no worries. Uh, just translating just a few strings, just a few words. But if your content is more international and you want to adapt to different language, culture is very important. A-B test. How many of you heard about A-B testing or something like that? Fantastic. So let me explain what is A-B testing. So a lot of time in designing product, especially digital product, um, you can't just simply design one solution, okay? Especially in, in user interface or the user flow, you're going to do A-B testing. What do you mean by A-B testing? It's just a simple way to say, I have this option A. It's not like I have an apple and then I have a pen. But I'm not going to combine them. I'm just going to see which one is the best. Okay? So I have an apple and then I have a pen, but the user loves the pen. And then it will pay me more. So of course I'm going to use the pen. So you get a meaning, right? We have two versions of the similar things, but with certain variants in it. We do the testing and then we go for it. Why we're doing it? Because you will never know which one is the best. Okay? You will never know which, uh, which things that the user is preferred until you really push it out, test with the users, get a very confident, uh, confident um, response or answer to tell you that, hey, this solution is better. Go for this one. So don't always assume that what you have is already the best. Okay? That's a very important mindset. Um, just like when you design, always the first design is, is going to be sucks. Okay? It's fine. You're going to test it anyway. You're going to roll it out, you're going to test it, you're going to know how bad is it, and then you're going to improve it. But always don't assume what's already there is the best. What is say like we use this concept hack the cover, you know, like for example, in Play Stores, you know, in Play Stores you have video, you have the screenshots, right? So we actually use that as an experimental platform to see which, which screenshot is better in terms of getting the conversion to get a user to install the app. So when you do app testing, of course, it will be better to have 5% improvement or more. If you have less than 5%, it's kind of um, the confidence level is going to be low and you are unsure which one is the better one. Uh, sometimes, often, this just gives you a false alarm or false results. 
So you must have a clear goal when you're doing such experiment, okay? And then the design will be doing for different variant, okay? For example, if you still remember the example that I gave you just now, okay, this one. Nothing changed, okay, only the button itself. This is A, B test. This is A, this is B, A, B test. Simple, two variants. Often we might have three variants, four variants as well, but of, um, most of the time we do two so that we have a confidence level in, for example, in this case, this one gives us a 22% boost. Of course we're going to do that, right? We're not going to do this again for some reason, okay? Because the user sees this as a very tangible button, for example, I don't know. Because it's kind of a psychological thing, so, uh, way of thinking. So this is one A-B testing. Um, second example of the A-B testing that we do in the Play Store listing is um, we're putting in the videos um, to see if we put the video, whether the user is going to download the app. And of course, the results telling us the story. It's, it's in between 1.7% and 12.9% of the confidence level. And the user is going to download the app when they view the videos. So of course we're going to put the video in it to encourage the user to download the app. So this is one, another example of how important is A-B testing because along the journey when you're creating a product, you want the users, you want the new users coming in, you really want to optimize all the things you can to keep the users coming in in the increased rate. You don't want to just keep something at the, at, at, at the fixed um, pattern and then just go with it. You want to optimize it. So this is something we call growth hacking as well. Um, if you are interested in, just go search for growth hacking. So something that we can do in short term, but we can hack the growth so that it can increase the revenue, increase the user retention, increase the user engagement. EPD equal growth. This is the last point. Um, the key in delivering great product. This is not just what I think, but a lot of great team actually thought the same as well. What is EPD, okay? Engineer, product design, and product and design, okay? Of course, this is not the only structures in most of the product, uh, I mean, in, in most of product development company, but this is quite often way of uh, how things work. In Fabulous, we have a product designer, product development, product manager, which is one of our co-founder. Design, of course, I'm the co-founder working on the design. Engineering, we have another technical lead, which is a co-founder as well, we, which is working on the engineer part. And one thing that we notice, especially when we look at uh, startups um, in this region, a lot of time, these people do not talk or do not communicate, and that's a bad thing, okay? These three things, three, these three departments or these three people should talk to each other, okay? Should communicate, should understand each other and grow together. And this is, we believe, the key in delivering great um, product um, from from the team. And using one example from the VP of design at Airbnb, he put in up this um, diagram, which is very inspiring. He was mentioning that you know, you're creating a chair and then you have the three arms, you have engineering, product, and design. When it's short, it's growing to the, at the same rate, and then it grows higher and then stable. It, it's still a stable chair, but growing and that should be how the product development is going to be why because if you oh, often start up start with you know you have product design product development and then you have engineering but you always think about oh design will be the last things to do don't care about design until we, we come up with this solution first and then the designer will take care of the rest and make it a beautiful app and make it work it's not going to work that way the design have to be coming in in a very early stage, ideally together with the engineering team and the product development team, discuss understanding 
grow together. Because if you, you can clearly clearly see if, if you started with engineering, product team, and your design team coming in later, you're not going to have a stable chair. This represents your bad product. And you're just going to waste time doing that. If you want success, you want to ensure that these three pillars growing at the same rate, growing at the same pace, and communicate each other to ensure that everyone is synchronized about the idea. Okay? For example, when I'm designing for Fabulous, I truly understand why this should be designed this way because from the product development point of view, this is important. And the technical lead understand how this is going to be implemented because they also, he also understand why this is needed and how this is designed. So, you know, these three pillars is very important in digital product. So, that's the interesting bits that I can share, that I can share through the journey of Fabulous. Um, I hope I still have some time. And Yellen was telling me that, hey, how about you share a little bit of your, you know, suggestion or advice of becoming a designer? Uh, because some people might be interested in becoming a designer, or maybe you are going to work with a designer, you know, you're going to understand a, bit, a little bit about designer. So, three advice, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, there's three advice here, of course. First, um, be passionate. Be passionate, be passionate, yeah, something like that. Be passionate. Um, how, okay, let's just have one guess game, maybe. If anyone can guess, um, what's my background in the university? This, do you think that I have a design background in the university? Raise your hand. No, I don't look like a designer. So sad, so sad. Okay, let me just tell you a story. Um, I'm a designer now, but I actually studied biomedical engineering. So, yeah. So, you can imagine that how different is it um, from engineering. Of course, we have design in engineering, but it's more like designing the circuits, designing the mechanical parts, but now I'm designing for digital product. So the only thing that I can think of why is this is because I think I'm passionate about design. I love design. Design is my hobby during the university time. And then I decided to put it to my profession, uh, as a professional work. So be passion is very important. So be passion. Without passion, you can't do great things. Okay? If you are decided to go that direction, you have to be ensured that you are really passionate about it. Go for it. Okay? That's the very, very first rules if you want to be a designer. Because designing, a lot of time, uh, include, uh, it involves a lot of things. You have to analyze the problem. You have to understand the problem. You have to understand the user. You have to talk to the user. You have to see the one stars and then talk to the users. You have to handle a lot of situations. But so designing is just not just you know opening photoshops, creating this thing, done, yay. That's the end of the day. No, it's not that simple. So be passionate about the things that you do. I mean of course not about design but about all the things that you're doing right now. If you're not happy about it, you're not passionate about it, probably find something else to do that uh, that, that can follow your passion. If you're interested in becoming a designer, first of all, of course, train your eyes to uh, look at the details. Okay? Anything that in, around surround you have details. Okay? Your phone, your apps, the door, the ceiling, the microphone, everything that's details. And you often find if you're able to notice it long enough or you have inspiration from the other product, you'll find that, hey, this thing is not designed that well, no? There's, you know, there's these things that doesn't work this way, kind of things. Start appreciating all the details that the product designer is putting in, understanding why these details in its matter for this product. 
it's very important to become a designer. Sympathy, okay? Sympathy cannot be taught, okay? If you have sympathy, you will have sympathy. If you have no sympathy, it's kind of hard to be taught actually, uh, but you can try. Maybe it's in, in you, but maybe you're just not realizing it. Becoming a designer, designing a solution is also, you have to be sympathized with the user. You have to understand that the users actually facing this problem and you want to create a solution to solve this problem. And to do it, you have to be sympathized with these users. You have to stand at the user's um, point of view and what's frustrating them, solve the problem. Be sympathy. Train your eyes. Train your eyes. Okay? If you want to be a designer, your eyes is very important. You have to be very careful about all the details. Um, you know, not just pixels. You know. It's also about the copies. You want to ensure there's no typography in the application. You want to ensure that uh, there's no extra spacing. There's no uh, you know, broken image, stuff like that. Because all these things play an important role in giving an impression to the users. When people, when the user sees the app with, you know, um, typography, with broken image or something like that, they will lose the impression that it's a good quality application. So train your eyes, be particular, understanding which is important and which is not. And copy. What do you mean by copy? I mean, I started, as I mentioned, I started as a biomedical engineering and before I started going into digital product, I copy a lot of ideas to inspire myself. You know, you can you can go a lot of different websites, Dribbble, Behance. Um, that's a lot of resources that can inspire you. And then you copy. In a way, I'm not asking you to copy and then put it to the commercial product. Of course, what I'm saying is that you can copy this idea, appreciate why this design is good and then think about what's the best way to adapt it to your product it's fine because idea is cheap you know like what just now the doctor mentioned idea is cheap but if you are the one who actually get the idea apply it to your way execute it implement it that's the thing that you own okay it's not just an idea. So copy, don't be afraid, and get inspiration from anywhere that you can to, to, to be good at design. Of course, I'm not saying that I'm very good at design. I'm still in the very early stage, I think. Um, I'm just two, three years down the road. That's it. But I think that's something that I can share if you are really inspired to be a designer. Understand design. Of course, I mentioned design is not art. Okay, you understand design is not art. Why do I say so? I mean, I, I often mention design is not art a few times. You know, when you look at designing things, it's more often like you understand how things work. And then you apply or you design a solution around uh, the problem, uh, to, to solve the problem. For example, if you talk about people who are designing the building, people who are designing the road, people who are designing the city, people who are designing the uh, escalator, the lift, you know, often they, it's, it's, there's no art involved, okay, but these people understand the whole system. They understand what the thing going to be involved, the material involved, you know, the physics involved, all the things involved. So, Come to think of it, designing is not just about art, it's more like understanding how things work. Okay? Applying the solution, understanding the constraint. You know, there's always constraint. Okay? There's one, one quote that from uh, Matthias Dutner, um, the, the, the design VP in Google. So he says, if there's no constraint, it's art. But when this, there's constraint, what you're designing is a solution. It's not art. So that's a very good one that's, that's always keep in my mind because that's really, really true. 
because you understand how it works, you have the constraint, you design a solution for the problem. So there's no art involved most of the time. And so that's the same in app design. If you're interested in app design, you know, it's the same. You, understand, you have to understand the technology behind it, you know. You can't just possibly imagine everything. You have to understand the platform, you have to understand the technology behind it, touch screen. For example, on iPhone you have 3D touch, you have Bluetooth, you have Wi-Fi, things like that. You have to understand how things work, you have to understand um, how big uh, is the tap area, for example, this and that. You have to understand the whole system, how it works. And then you start designing the solution to solve a certain problem. So that's, that's uh, how it works for designing. And of course in startups, um, as a designer, you most of the time if you are just one or two designers, you're going to play a multiple roles. What I mean by roles, in designing there's a lot of different roles, you know. You have visual designer who creating the visuals. You have interaction designer creating interactions in the applications. You have copywriter, you have uh, a lot of different design positions, for example. If you look at Google, that's a lot of different type of designer in the design team. So you can know how intense or how, how huge is the group is needed to create a great product. But of course, in startups, if you're starting up, you probably, like for example, for me, I'm, I'm the only designer in the team. I'm happy about it. Um, I did a lot of work, but you know, that's made me learn a lot as well. So if you are, have an opportunity to, to, to you know, designing in a startup, uh, just be ready for it. You have to be taking care of a lot of multi, uh, different roles, taking care of the, a lot of different parts. But it's a great experience, I can tell you. It's a great experience. And of course, as a designer, as I mentioned, it's to solve problems. Okay? So you do not want to cause the user to have this, or you want the user to have a very smooth, smooth, smooth flow so that a user is able to achieve what they want to do with your product. And lastly, communicate. And of course, you can see this is the second time that I mentioned about communication because I think it's very important. It's very important in a way that without communication, it's not possible to create a great product. So it's very crucial communicating with all the people in the team, understanding each other. You know, as a designer, you kind of have to understand a little bit how code works. Understand, play around with Android Studio, for example, if you talk about Android apps. Understanding how layout works, stuff like that. And then you can design in a very efficient way because then you can talk to the developers like you are the developers, but you are not. You are a designer who understand their roles, understand what tools they are using. So communicating with the developers in the right way is also a very important thing. And of course, not just developers, but the whole team to synchronize the idea of certain features or the whole product, communicate is very important. Tools. Tools is a very important thing for communication. So for design, like for myself, I use a Mac. So in Mac, there's a few design tools that's very, very useful for me to, to communicate with the team. I use Sketch, I use Zeppelin, I use Principle. Uh, no worries, if you are interested, you can just ask me anytime. But these tools help me to communicate with the, uh, with the team to say, hey, this is my design, why I'm designing this, how this interaction is going to work, um, how this is going to transition from this screen to another screen. It's very important to communicate this to the whole team, the developer team, the product development team, so that everyone understands how these things work. So use too efficiently to improve communication. It's also very important. Specs, of course. If you talk about mobile app design, you have to have a way to hand off to your developers, okay? So they understand, oh, this, this word from this word is 10 pixel, stuff like that. It's very important. Otherwise, your design will go into waste because the developers do not know what's the exact spec, how to implement um, the design and then you will have end up the design in a very bad state. So 
communicating specs is very important. Interactive, of course, a lot of time. Gone are the days, actually, when you're creating mock-ups that you just screen by screen, you know? Just creating one screen, second screen, third screen, something like that. But you have to understand that when you're creating applications, users are going to interact with the applications. So designing the interactions, communicating that interactions to the, use, uh, to the development team is very important because they have to understand how these things work. Whether these screens go to these screens, how it actually goes to this, it's very important. They have to understand it to implement it. If you are not telling them how it goes to work, they, the developers are going to do whatever they like. And then your end result was not, you will not be going to be beautiful. So, concern about interaction as well when you're designing the applications. And of course, as I mentioned just now, handoff, the design handoff is very important. Look for opportunity, explore the tools that you can um, pass all the necessary things to the developer so that they can efficiently do their work, um, implement what you envision in the terms of design, and then things will work just fine. This, this, this is actually exactly the model that we are using in Fabulous. Um, I'm trying not to block the development team by providing all the things that they need, and then they will be able to implement it very efficiently. So, I hope this three piece of, I will not say advice, but something from experience can help or inspire you. Like, becoming a designer is, um, is a choice, but it's a fun experience. Um, if you have someone, you know, some friend or some relative or whatever that's interested in design, you know, maybe it's, 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 it's good to ask them to, to look at, you know, um, digital product designer. It's fun experience, it's, it's great thing, it's, it's growing right now. Um, I can tell you there's a lot of demand right now for this, a lot. You cannot imagine people is looking for people like this. And you have, if you're good at it, you will, you will, be, you will be really, I think you will feel very happy. But first, the, 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 but the bottom line is, if you want to be a designer, the very first word that you have to put in front is be passionate. I think that's a very important one. Because if you are not passionate about it, you are just doing it just for the sake of doing it, or you know, you are, you are just because it's a work, it's not going to, probably it will work, but you know, you're not probably going to be happy about it. Because, I mean, for me, when I'm doing design, um, I'm, also, I'm always happy, I'm always, well, well sometimes I'm frustrated because I, I can't have the idea how to design. But when you are able to design something, and then you get the user feedback saying that, hey, the design works, we love the design, thanks for designing this, that's probably made your day, and that's proof what, what you are doing is worth the time, and you are motivated to continue doing it. Thank you very much, and I hope you get some inspiration from this, and feel free to contact me anytime uh, at Twitter, uh, TaylorLink, or at Google Plus, TaylorLink as well, or you can get from Yelin my email maybe, if you have any question at all about design, of course. Don't ask me about engineering, okay? I will send the question to Sun Sun, Sun Sun so that he can help you. But if anything design, you know, if you're going to work in startups, you know, you're saying, oh, I'm going to design for a startup, so whatever issues that you have, just feel free to um, get in touch, and I'm more than happy to help. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dilalin. Thank you. Uh, for the time management, we only accept three questions to ask Dilalin. So, yeah, first question.
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, we support Spanish, French, Chinese. Um, yeah, I think the only these three major languages, but we are currently working on Korean, Japanese, um, and a few languages uh, on the pipeline. So, but it's not an easy task, you know, the, the first thing, because we have, we have quite a lot of content. So translating all of this is not an easy task as well. And as I mentioned, we are not funded, we are self-funded. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a tough challenge. But yeah, currently we're supporting that three to four language. English, of course, English, Chinese, Spanish, French, um, and then we are continuing supporting other languages as well. That's, that's a good, <laughs> that's a fantastic question actually. Um, if you actually downloaded Fabulous right now, um, if you try to use the app, you, you will find out that um, Fabulous use variety of colors. Uh, that's the purpose, that's, that's actually the purposefully. Um, when I'm designing the app, I'm trying to create an app that's not limited by the colors, uh, but trying to give the beauty of the colors to the, to the users to enjoy the colors. So back to your questions, um, you're creating an app for students and you're looking at what's the best colors, something like that. Um, I can give you a suggestion that go for colors that, um, that is uh, more neutral, not too strong. Um, for example, in, in Fabulous, uh, actually the colors, the main color is pink color. Okay, you can see that. Um, Maybe and often you would think pink is kind of related to girls, maybe, maybe. But for me, I, I see it just another colors. I see it as the colors that, that bring um, uh, joyful, delightful, you know, beautiful things like that. So, using colors is is actually a very good question, you know. But I'm not an expert in colors. What what I like, what I can suggest is just use colors that is more neutral, like. Um, Blue gray, for example, or uh, dark purple, for example, something like along the line. Because if you're use, using colors too, that that's too strong, um, people might not like it. Um, and uh, but of course, back to the very very things that I mentioned in the slides. If you really want to be unsure about your color choice, um, you can do testing. Just design it, push it to the users, or just you know, just ask for students to give their comments. You will, you will probably find the best colors for your applications. Yeah. Is it the last question? Um, so my question is like uh, one: the designer came up with a really nice animation or something like a really good design that. What if the your developer can really implement it, or it might need some time for him to implement that that good design? So how do you like adjust with him if uh, you have to, uh, a little bit like uh, limited product time or something like that? Yeah. Yes, of course. That's that's another good question. I really love this because the, you guys ask a very good question, actually, and I didn't cover this part much because. Um, we, we already have a way in, 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 I mean, I mentioned a few things, okay. So first thing, come back to you, your question is like, let's say if your developer doesn't know how to implement your animations, or doesn't know how to implement your design, or they need some time to figure it out. Um, so what my stance is as a designer, I will always have uh, alternative solutions. So. Whenever I try to design something, I will try to create a mess no, no, um, with no, animated no. stuff, with uh, a little bit of custom design, stuff like that. But 
as a startup founder as well, you have to understand there's always time constraint. You always want to push updates to the users. So you always Hello. need to have a backup as well, backup solution. So that let's just say if the developer says that, hey, you know, this thing looks a little bit tricky and then I might need three days to implement this, but our release is just one day away. So you have to have to a backup solution, the design solution, so that um, it's not going to compromise the experience. That's the most important thing. You do not want to design something that can compromise the experience, but those animations or beautiful design is just uh, more of the uh, uh, extra on top of the great experience. So always having that backup solutions and as I mentioned just now, communicating is very important. If you're able to communicate this early mm -hmm. to your developers, think that, hey, you know, you want to do these things, yeah. um, can you evaluate how much time you need? And then if it's going to be two days, and then the product development team says, the product manager says, it's fine, we have two days to, to do that. And, hey, then your design is going to be in. But often, you know, sometimes the, the, the developer will say, I need one day or two days, but end up, it's just too tricky. It's going to too, take more days than that. Then you have to find a balance in between. Like, okay, how about this solution? I think this is easier and also provide the similar level of experience. How about this? You can do this or not, this and that. So communication is very important. Okay, so that's one one bottom line that I can say. But of course, as a designer, I always have uh, backup solutions for a design. Whenever I see there's some tricky parts that the developer or the development team might, might face. So understanding how things work in development world is also important as a designer because you you can and you you can vision that oh this animation looks very complicated so I think it's going to take two days approximately. So when you're designing that, always keep in mind that these things probably not going to eat, probably not in this version, in the next, maybe you will go into the next version. So find a balance in between. Um, don't, don't, be, don't be too harsh saying that no, this must go in, otherwise the app going to be bad. It's not going to be that way. I can tell you that you know, there's a lot of time if you have acceptable solutions to a certain design details, it's fine. And then you will have more time in the future to optimize it. So I hopefully I answered your questions, but that's that's how, how we work in balance.